don't tell serious, like, super serious stuff. Like, I don't tell... Like, I... I don't like to live through bad, very bad personal stuff. Like, when I found out that my granddad was going to die. I was in, um... I was in maths class in school, and my... Um, yeah, I was in maths class in school, and I was sat doing, like, some sums or something. I think this was, like, year 9 or 10 or something. I don't know. I think it was, like, year 9. And a kid came into the classroom and was like, Hey, um, uh, Alex needs to go to... Uh, Alex's dad is here. Well, it didn't say my dad was here. It's like, Alex needs to go to reception. So I got up. And I went to go to reception. Everyone in class was like, Oh, he's in trouble. Ooh. You know, like what normal kids do. So I got up and I walked down to reception. And this kid was like, with me. And he said, like, yeah, you need to go to reception. I was like, why do I need to go to reception for? What have I done? And he was like, your dad's here. He says it's serious. And I was like, what do you mean it's serious? And as I'm walking down the hall, I'm like, oh, wait. Because my granddad was in the hospital at the time. He'd been in the hospital for quite a while. And I was like, wait, this could be about granddad. So I immediately was like, oh, no. And then I ran down. The, instead of walking down the hall, I ran down the hall. I ran towards dad. I was like, dad, what's going on? Is it about granddad? And he's like, yeah, you might want to get in the car. So I got in the car. It was the longest car ride I've ever had. And we drove up to the hospital. I got there. I saw my granddad like literally two days before. I literally saw my granddad like two days before this happened. And he was fine. He was happy and chirpy. He even. Because I thought I had magic money in my pocket. But no, it just turned out my granddad had like hidden a pound, like two pound or a pound coin in my um, in my coat which kind of made me happy but yeah he was happy he was talking fine and then two days later I get to the hospital and my entire family's there, my mum, my sisters, my dad my gran, my granddad's brother, we're all there and my granddad wasn't doing too good he was slurring his words. He couldn't even talk very much. He saw that we were here. And we had a bit of a scare. Um, while we were there, he... He went quiet and silent. We thought he had... He had just died. I was holding his hand. And I was telling him, like... Hey, we're all here. Um, do you remember that time that Grandma forgot the pasties? It's a story he knows of it the past season we had to go all the way back and it was really hard for me that day and then I couldn't take any more I wanted to be there for him I wanted to stay there but I couldn't I was like 15 at the time like 15 16 this was like 2010 or 11 like just the start of 2011 and I just couldn't, I couldn't stay, and I went home, and I just sat at home, and I sat in my room, I didn't do anything, I didn't go back to school for the rest of the day, I sat at home, and I watched a bit of TV, and I played a little bit of my Xbox, and I just waited, and then my dad came upstairs, my dad came upstairs, and he said, Alex, we've got some news. And I knew it was the news I didn't want to hear. And he told me that my granddad had died. He said, he came up and he just went, Alex, it, it, yeah, it's, it's, I could just see that my dad didn't want to say it, say it, but he had to. He was just like, Alex, it, it, granddad's gone. He's gone. 
and I just burst into tears. Like I cried that whole day. Like for the rest of the day I cried. I couldn't even sleep. Dad bought me pizza. I think he bought me pizza. He bought me something to calm me down. He bought me like dominoes or something. But yeah. I'm sorry for bringing down bringing it all down and telling that like sad ass story. Cuz you know, I want to keep things happy and I'm just that's why I don't like talking about serious stuff because it brings things down and I like to be happy. But you can't be happy all the time. But I had to tell that story because I haven't actually told that story much not in that detail so you're lucky if you heard me tell a serious thing for once and that's not a joke that is 100% serious story obviously I wouldn't joke about a thing like that what made it worse was the next day in school because I didn't go to school the next day or the day after that I actually had a week off school and then when I came back to school, um, everyone thought that I had done something really bad and that I got excluded from school for a week. It's like, oh, you had to go to reception, you got kicked out of school for a week. Oh, and obviously, I still had the sadness in me because obviously it's a week, I'm not going to be over it in a week. But I got angry. And the person who kept telling me that I had done something wrong, the, the, the person who said, like, oh, I got in trouble with the school and I got excluded for a week uh, I punched him in the face like during uh, during art class I just punched him right in the face I was like because he was like oh you're excluded oh my god rebel uh, fucking asshole so I punched so I punched him square in the face didn't care teacher was out teacher was out of the class at the time so I didn't care nobody was going to see what I did so I punched him in the face he shut up after that but he told the te but somebody told the teacher and said that I punched him and the teacher already knows what was going on with me because every teacher was told all of my teachers were told what I was going through and to you know back off a little bit but obviously I punched someone in the face so they can't you know back off if I do that so they s basically I got told off for punching him it was like that I know you're going through some stuff right now Alex but you can't really punch someone in the face I was like well, he shouldn't be taking the piss out of me then, should he? He's like, I know, but you shouldn't be punching someone in the face. In the moment they said I'm going through some stuff, the person who was taking the piss didn't give a shit, but like, I saw some of my friends and this girl that I had a crush on, they immediately look at me with like, worrying eyes as if I'd like, killed someone. And, and uh, then I had to tell the class what was going on. And then everyone shut up after that. Gave me a little bit of sympathy and left me alone. So I was like, yeah, I'd rather if you guys I didn't do anything bad, I didn't get excluded, I had to be out of the I had to be out of school for a week because my granddad had passed. And then obviously the girl that I liked gave me a hug, kissed me on the cheek told me everything was going to be okay and I said yeah I know it's going to be okay but I miss him and then I burst into tears while um, obviously she hugged me I then got hugs from everybody else I got consolement art class was my place there was just the one kid in that class I hated because he thought it was above everybody else but other than that I had, an, I had a good time for that well uh, uh, I had a good time in art class art class was like my safe place I could just be myself there I could draw paint whatever I freaking wanted but um yeah I'm um, yeah anyway I'm gonna stop talking about that now because that's just bringing it down and I don't want to cry today today's about happy things it's about killing Jason Statham that's all this journey's been about I'm gonna drive the train straight into the goddamn wall at the station oh that lagged a bit I'm kidding, I'm not going to kill him. I'm not going to kill anyone, I want to finish this journey. Which I've almost done, I've almost finished the journey, Jason. Mr. Statham. Statham Jason. Bastard. But yeah, if you want to see my speed trial that I said about earlier, um, let me know. I will edit and upload it after this, so there may be some inaccuracies in the recording. Because I didn't have the line, this line back when I was recording that. So there might be some things where I'm like, 
I want to get the Trans Pennine line, which is this one. I should have pointed that out at the start. But I do like this line. It's a great line. I love this line. This is my new favorite line. I'm going to play this a lot. I'm going to try and complete all the scenarios on recording as well. Because I think I should do scenarios as well instead of just going straight into the timetable and doing the full line. But now that I've done the full line... You know, now you know what the full line is and I can do all the scenarios. So I might have a go at scenarios at some point in this place. But here we are. We have reached the town of Manchester. Those of you who live in Manchester, this is probably what you saw in the 80s. There was a station back there that doesn't even exist. I went on Google Maps to check if anything has changed. This place is sort of the same, but there is a lot of um, different modernizations, obviously. Like the building's been modernized. Right. I don't want to fail. I don't want to come all this way just to fail, so... No, come on. Yeah, you need to... Notch one, please. No. Speed up. Speed up! Speed up! Oh, that's not even working. Speed up! Speed up! Need to go up times. Yeah, there you go. So we need to actually stop here and then finish. I had this idea, but I may not do it though. My idea was to do a live stream of Train Sim whenever I have time, whenever I have like a full day. Like, literally, like if Shai's at her mum's and my dad is on holiday or spending the night with his girlfriend or something. I had this idea where I do a live stream, where I live stream train sim for 24 hours and I just complete the full um, timetable and that's it. That was literally my I m the only idea I had. I was like, yeah, that's a cool idea. I'll just torture myself with the full game. I'll just, you know, play the whole game, the whole um, timetable, and that's it. Oh, I, I wasn't crouched, but I, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah, we've reached Manchester, we finished the line. And I did it all in one go this time. When did I do that before? Oh yeah, I did that to the um, London St. Pancras one. Where I went to go from St. Pancras to Faversham. Yeah, so I think that's the only time I did it all in one go. God, that was years ago. But, I've done this now, objective complete. And I've completed it, right. What time? Okay, I was due at Dewsbury at 10.37. I got there at 10.36. Oh, damn. I got to these places on time. I got to Stale Bridge exactly on time. I was due at 11.12, but I got there at 11.12. Um, and then I was due at Manchester at 11.27, and I've got there a full, I think, five minutes before? Four minutes? Wait. Two, three. Yeah, five minutes. I got it right first time. Yeah, so um, that was Train Sim World, the Trans Pennine line. The entirety of the line. I like doing full lines. It's, I like it. So I'll probably go back and do some scenarios at some point. I'll do some scenarios. Just have a little walk around, see if there's any like maps that I need to put in. But yeah, um, oh, I remember those. I remember those kind of things. Had those at Plymouth. Yeah, um, oh, there's a map. I can put one down. There we go. Yeah, a little map. Put that down. But yeah, so that was the Transpend Online. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. I like this line. As I've said, my new favorite line. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go. And I will come back again in Train Sim World to do some scenarios. And um, probably upload those. Um, that poster I can put down. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then I'll probably put down, um, I'll probably, yep, I can put down poster here. Cool, that's, that's more stuff for me to do. But yeah, I'll probably put up those um, speed tests and stuff, speed trials. But for now, uh, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode of Train Sim World, where I have no idea what I'll be doing, but yeah. See you later!